Now, you might be asking yourself, why would I even want to transition from 2D to 3D? And well, that's a fair question. After all, 2D animation is incredible in its own right. Just look at how Japanese animation has blown up in the last decade, with a market worth 31 billion US dollars in 2023. Besides, some might also argue that 3D animation is a tough nut to crack in terms of the barrier of entry. But honestly, it is not as hard as it seems, at least not for someone who's already skilled in 2D. First of all, I would like to mention that making the switch can be a great idea for several reasons, depending on your goals, resources, and the type of content you want to create. It is actually a different storytelling medium that you can use to achieve both stylized and photorealistic projects. And the discussion here isn't about which one is easier. Rather, it is about seeing 3D as just another tool that can be added to an animator's toolbox, because they may not realize it at first, but deep down, they already have a wealth of skills and experience that you can use easily to transfer over from 2D to 3D. Before we continue, I want to tell you about the last drawing tablet from XP-Pen. The XP-Pen Deco 640 is a compact and budget-friendly drawing tablet. It is ideal for beginners or anyone looking for something portable. It is slim at just 7.7 millimeters of thickness, with an active area of 16 by 9 centimeters, or about the size of a small notebook. So it won't clutter your desk, and it is easy to carry around. Additionally, its P01 stylus doesn't need batteries, which means no charging to worry about, and it includes 10 extra nibs for when you need replacements. With 16K levels of pressure sensitivity and a 60 degree tilt range, it offers good control over your lines and shading. It is also compatible with a wide range of platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux, and Chrome OS, and it connects via USB-C for a simple setup. This tablet doesn't have extra buttons or screens, keeping things uncomplicated and user-friendly. While the drawing surface might show somewhere over time with heavy use, it is still a practical choice for illustration, digital learning, signing, or maybe some little games and so on, making it a portable option for any artist. As an artist, one of my all-time favorite books is The Illusion of Life, Disney Animation by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, and I can go about it forever, but to keep it brief and simple, it is considered one of the most influential books in the art of animation, and it is also considered a classic that I'm sure all the animators watching right now probably have heard of it. Basically, it lays out the core principles that form the foundation for creating good, realistic, and expressive animations, no matter what your medium is, because the philosophy of motion remains the same. As a result, the great thing about transitioning to 3D is that you just need to get comfortable with the tools and the workflow of 3D, which to me is the easier part. It is kind of like going from driving a car to a motorcycle or vice versa. Sure, it is different, but it is still driving on the road. The same logic applies when it comes to animation. The hardest part of it is the theory. But in principle, it requires a deep understanding of how various elements influence the emotional and visual impact of an animation sequence, such as anticipation, secondary action, timing, squash, stretch, and so on. And the proof of this, we have works such as The First Slam Dunk, one of the highest grossing anime films of all time. And it used a type of 3D animation that attempted to mimic the feeling of 2D animation, which is, in my opinion, a proof that shows us how similar they can be, and why the principles matter more than the tools themselves. The main difference between 2D and 3D animation is that 2D uses hand-drawn images that you can draw frame by frame, or by animating 2D layers of objects in software such as Spline or After Effects, for example by either adding bones or puppet points. Well, 3D to a certain extent is the same, but the difference is that the objects have depth as well. And as you may know, 2D animation is typically made on a 2D plane, and the perspective 
is restricted to only height and width. To face this, they use a collection of techniques to create the illusion of depth in addition to space, such as shading, layering, and perspective. In 3D animation, on the other hand, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff, because it operates in a 3D dimensional space, with 3D objects that have height, depth, and width, and they can be positioned, rotated, and scaled around the space however you want, as well as cameras that can move around in this 3D space. Think of it as having this massive court, where you can make anything happen, but the question is, how do you pull that off? For this, you need to decide your path. If you want to create simulations that mimic real-world phenomena like smoke, water, destruction effects, or even particles and spells, then procedural animation might be your ideal choice. With this workflow, instead of animating elements manually, you set up a series of physical rules and parameters that the software then uses to generate realistic animations automatically in a way that can closely resemble real-life behavior. Now, if you are driven by artistic flair only, manual animation might be your cup of tea. In this approach, you typically create a virtual skeleton on an object, be it a person, animal, robot, car, or anything else, which you can then use to influence different parts of your project. Within this skeleton, there would be bones representing different parts of the object, for example, if you are working with a human character, each bone will control a specific body part, like the neck, head, or torso, with the flexibility to adjust and refine the movement as needed. You can then animate the character by moving and rotating the objects within the 3D space, either one by one or by configuring your rig. For instance, you can set up constraints, and with these, you can define the relationship between different parts of the rig such as making sure one bone follows the movement of another or limiting the range of motion, or by controllers, building facial controllers, and IK and FK systems, and to keep it simple, IK lets you move the end of the limb and have the rest of the limb follow, while FK involves rotating each joint. Of course, this is just a basic overview, and there is an endless sea of content to discover in this 3D world. Now that you have seen why making transition can be a good idea, as well as seeing the difference between the two and the basics, now at the same time, it can be overwhelming to figure out where to start. First, you need to decide which software to use, and in my book, there are three main candidates, Blender, Cascador, and Maya. To start, I'm gonna rule out Cascador, because while it uses AI and auto physics to assist you with animation, it is still important to learn the basics and animate without such assistance first because it is more effective to learn the fundamentals that way, and it will make you a better 3D animator. Then, when it comes to the other two, I can already anticipate a heated debate about which one is better. However, for the transition purpose, despite how great Maya can be, Blender is still the safest choice. But if you want to join the industry and work professionally, probably Maya gives you better chances. First of all, Blender is free forever, making it a great option for testing the waters and seeing if 3D animation is truly meant for you. On top of that, Blender offers an exceptional number of free online tutorials and paid courses, which are not expensive, along with a large and supportive community or you can engage in famous social groups that can further assist you. I suggest beginning with small, simple projects, like animating a bouncing ball to build your skills and confidence, and gradually increase the complexity of your projects over time. However, whenever you face difficulties and feel a bit discouraged, you can try different things or simpler things. With that being said, it is now time to address the elephant in the room. 2D animation kind of has a high entry barrier. It can take years to master drawing or animating, but once you do that, nothing can stop you. Well, give or take. In contrast, you can learn the basics of 3D animation in weeks, but mastering that, it takes months and even years, 
due to the additional complexity. Whether you are planning to be a one-person studio or handling only the animation within a large animation pipeline, this discipline requires you to be a generalist first and then specialize. So it is also important to learn how to work with 3D models, including how they are created, as well as having to understand texturing, rendering, compositing, and the technical aspects of the 3D work. Look, I get it. This might not be your cup of tea, but it wasn't mine at one point too. As a side note, 3D animation is constantly evolving and we are seeing lots of things taking place. For example, AI is now knocking the door with 3D software such as Cascador. So it is also important to stay up to date with the latest innovations in the field and use the tools that can help you animate faster once you learn the fundamentals to be able to create your animation projects much faster. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.